One of my clients was asking about the Select Your Own Avatar project that I did a video on a while back, and uh, she just had some additional follow-up questions with that. So we spent some time online, and I walked her through the, the process of creating such a, an example. And during that, of course, the discussion came up that, you know, to do this on multiple slides is going to require a lot of advanced actions. So I thought that would be a really good use case for creating and using a shared action in Adobe Captivate. And I thought I'd share that with you today. So I have my introduction slide. There's really nothing here except uh, three different characters. And to provide an example of, of how you might use that throughout a course, I've created three slides with uh, an additional character image. But in this case here, the character image is a multi-state object that contains the three different possible avatars that you might be using. I'm going to exit the state here. And, uh, you know, you could use this uh, on as many slides as you wish. So what we need to do is we need to have a selection process. We need to keep track of what the user has selected. And then on the enter of each slide, check which selection was made by the user and change the state of that multi-state object. So let's, uh, let's build this. And again, we're going to use shared actions here. So this will be a lot easier than having to write potentially dozens and dozens or even hundreds of advanced actions. So let's start off with um, our opening slide where the users will select um, which avatar they wish to use for this project. So I'm going to click on the interactions toolbar icon. And in this case, there's a couple of ways you could do this, but in this case, I'm going to use a click box. And when I place that on the slide, of course, I'm just going to use my alignment toolbar, which if you don't have it open, you can open that by selecting it from the window drop down menu. And I'm just going to make sure that that alignment toolbar is the top layer. And uh, what I'm going to do is select my first character here and then select the click box. I'm doing this from the timeline and just making sure that they're going to be resized and aligned perfectly with one another. And that's why I really want my alignment toolbar open because I can just click this icon here and that will take care of that quite nicely for me. And next, of course, let's add uh, an additional click box. In this case here, we're just going to make sure that's on top of Anthony. I'm going to select Anthony and then select the click box. And again, I'll use that align and resize to same size icon. Now they're over top of one another. And uh, let's add one more for Brad over here on the right hand side. So again, a click box. And uh, we'll just select Brad here and that click box and make sure they're aligned together with one another here. I just want to make sure that the click box is the topmost layer of all of this slide here. So the next thing I need to do is um, create some ad very simple advanced action for all three of our click boxes here. So I'm going to select uh, the first click box, which is Angela. And I'm going to change this from go to next slide to execute advanced actions. Remember, advanced actions are when you have two or more uh, actions or if you have a condition that needs to be met. And so in this case here, we're going to have two actions in this particular advanced action. So I'm going to uh, click on the advanced action icon and start building the first advanced action. So we're going to call this click underscore Angela. And the first thing we need to do before we write any actions down, we're going to need to create a new variable that's going to keep track of which uh, character has been selected. So I'm going to click on the variables button down here, which opens up the variables window. And I'm going to click add new. And we'll call this avatar underscore selected. I don't need a value because it will be assigned later. And I'll hit save. 
So by clicking on Angela, what we want to do is we want to assign the value of avatar selected with the literal name Angela. And we need to go to next slide. We'll save this as an action. We'll hit OK and we'll hit close. And you'll see that the script is selected already for Angela. Let's go to Anthony here. We'll change that to Execute Advanced Actions. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Advanced Action icon and duplicate the Click Angela script because all we need to do is make a small change to it. Uh, I'm going to change the title of it to Click Anthony. And we'll change the value that we're assigning the tracking variable to Anthony's name. And that's it. So we can update that action, click OK, click Close, and let's make sure that that click box is now pointing at the new script we just wrote, click Anthony. And now we'll do the same thing for Brad. So we'll go change the uh, on success action from go to next slide to execute advanced actions. We'll click on our advanced actions icon and uh, we'll duplicate this action and just change that to click Brad. And again, all I need to do is just change what we're storing in that tracking variable. And we'll just say Brad. So we can update this action now, close, and make sure that the Brad click box is pointing to click Brad. So let's go to our first slide. And here is where we're going to have an on enter advanced action. So if you go to the actions tab, of your properties inspector, you can change this to execute advanced actions. But remember, we're going to actually create a shared action. So this will change, but for right now, we need to do it this way. So now we're going to create a new script. So I'm gonna click on the script icon here and click the plus icon at the top right of the advanced actions window. And we're gonna call this check underscore avatar. Now this is going to be a conditional action and uh, we're simply going to say if the variable avatar selected is equal to the literal value Angela then we're going to change the state of and as you can see, I've, I've labeled all of the multi-state object characters for slides two, three, and four to be character slide two, character slide three, and character slide four, so it's easy to keep track of. But for right now, we only need to be concerned about the first slide that we're changing the character to. So this is character slide two. And uh, I could have labeled these better, but uh, Angela is the normal state, so we'll go with that. And that's pretty much it. Let's give this uh, a name here. We'll call this Angela. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this decision, this uh, conditional action here. And we're going to call this now Anthony. And we're going to change this to be or to check for the value Anthony, and if so, we're going to change the character to the new state one. And let's duplicate that again. And we'll call this one Brad. And if the avatar selected is equal to Brad, then we're going to change the character to the third state or new state too. And that's basically all we need to do. So let's save this as an action first. So we have a copy of it if we need to look at it. But what we're going to do so that this is easier to implement across an entire course where these various multi-state object characters exist, we're gonna save this as a shared action. And when you click on that button, 
the Save as Shared Action dialog appears. You can give it uh, a different name if you wish, and you can add a description. If you're not the only developer of this e-learning course, you might want to put a description here so that other developers are aware of what this shared action does. And of course, any parameter that has a check mark next to it, uh, there's really nothing for you to do. Uh, but the ones, of course, with the warning symbol next to it, require that you just give it a parameter description here. So uh, in this case, character slide two. So what we're looking for is uh, the multi-state avatar. And we can just actually give these uh, descriptions the name of the avatar. So in this case here, Angela and Anthony and Brad. So now that we have uh, a very simple um, description for each one, we'll hit save and we'll hit OK. And we can now close the advanced action window. Now we're going to change this now from execute advanced actions to execute shared action. And check avatar is our only shared action. And you'll see this little parameters icon next to your script. If you click on that, you can make the choices. So in this case here, uh, let's select, um, in this case here, the character that's on this slide, which is here. And in this case here, we just need to indicate which one is Angela, which one's Anthony, and which one is Brad. Save, and that's now done. I can go to the additional slide now, and let's do the same thing. We'll, we'll show you how easy this is to implement. Execute shared action, parameters. So each slide will have its own unique parameters. In this case here, we're working with the character slide three and the state for Angela is normal. The state for Anthony is new state one and the state for Brad is new state two. Let's hit save. And now we'll go to our third slide. Again, we can execute shared action. You can see this is a lot easier to set up than writing a whole bunch of different uh, advanced actions over and over again. So in this case here, just select the uh, different states for those characters. We'll click Save, and we are good to go. So let's test this out. We'll do a preview of this project in HTML5. So we start off on this slide here. Let's um, choose Anthony for starters. So now we're on slide two. We see Anthony, of course, which makes sense. We see Anthony again. And a third time we see Anthony. Let's try this again and make sure it works for the other situations. Let's try Brad. Next. Next. There's Brad. Perfect. And we'll do it one last time checking that that Angela is selected. Perfect. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.